video, we're gonna create a really cool glitch effect using only the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro. So over here in Final Cut Pro, I have two resources here. I have the video clip that you saw in the beginning of the introduction, and I also have the music that went along with it. Both of these resources came from Artlist.io, and if you'd like to use these specific resources, I'll put a link to them down in the description. Artlist.io is a paid subscription, so if you don't wanna to have to actually pay for these clips, you can also just head over to Pexels.com and download an actual video clip there that you can then apply this glitch effect to. I'm gonna use these clips just because I like the way they look and they sound, but that doesn't mean that you have to use these. You can use whatever clip you want and you'll be able to actually create this effect as well. Everything that we do in this video is going to be something that's available in Final Cut Pro. There's no plugins required. So let's actually start to build this out. First thing we're gonna do is put our playhead back at the beginning. We'll click on the video clip. We'll hit the E key to actually add it to our timeline. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this so that we can kind of see what we're doing here. I'll just kind of pull this over like that. Now the first step we have to do here is figure out where the actual glitch is gonna happen in our video here. So if we just kind of scrub through this, what I want is for when we get to about here where she starts to look back, that's where I want the actual glitch to start happening. So I'm gonna just kind of find the point where it looks like she's gonna start and I'll actually maybe go back a frame there or two like that. Right there is where I wanna actually cut the clip. So I'm gonna do Command B, use the blade tool to cut the clip there. And then after that, she's looking Looking back, walking backwards, and then at some point she's going to look back the other direction and start to walk the other direction right here where she's kind of looking to the side a little bit as she's turning around. That's where I want the glitch effect to end. So I'm going to do command B there also, and that's going to give me my actual clip that I need to be able to add my glitch effect. Now you'll notice right away that if we play that whole clip right there, that would be a very, very, very long glitch effect, right? We don't want the actual clip to be that long. So what I want to do is shorten that clip up. Now we could just kind of actually drag it and shorten it, but what we really want to do is we want to retime it so that it's a little faster because I think retiming it and actually making the clip faster to shorten it up will add to the glitchiness of it. So what I want to do is I want to click on that clip. I want to go over to my retime tools here, click on fast, and then click on four times so that we speed the clip up four times faster than it was originally. And now if we watch it, that whole glitch section right here, that happens way faster and it's gonna be a lot more believable and we'll be able to kind of sell that glitch effect more effectively. Now the next thing that I wanna do, now that we have the length of the glitch set, I wanna actually add some transitions on each side of the glitch. And the transition I wanna use is actually going to be a directional blur. But if I were to just grab a directional blur and apply it to the side of the clip over here, you can see that the transition itself would be very large. And I don't want that to be the case. I don't want the transition to be extremely long because by default, most of the transitions are going to be a certain length. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna to go to my dissolve transitions and I wanna grab the flow transition because by default, the flow transition is much shorter. So I'm going to apply the flow transition to each side of my clip here. And then I'm gonna go back to my blurs and then I'm gonna drag the directional blur on top of the flow so that it will replace the flow but keep the actual length and size of the flow itself. So now over here in my inspector, you can see that I have the directional blur transition transition, and this is going to be the actual transition that I want. Adding in those transitions is really going to help sell that glitch effect. It's going to actually ease into the glitch effect, which is going to make it more interesting. Now, what I need to do, if I go over here and I click on the actual blur itself, you can see that by default, it's pointing to the right. And I do not want the original one to point to the right. I want when the actual transition comes in, I want it to actually blur from right to left. So to to change that, if we just kind of go over top of our transition here, then we come up here to our angle. If I change this angle from 360 to 180, it will actually point in the opposite direction, which means that it's going to actually flow or blur from the right to the left. So when the actual transition happens over here, if we just kind of go through it, it's gonna blur from right to left to come into the transition, which is what I want. And then as it goes out of the glitch over through this transition, it's actually going to go from left to right, which is what I want there. So it's gonna blur right to left, 
and then left to right. And that's how I want that transition to happen. And like I said, adding that transition is going to make it just a much more interesting glitch effect. And now that we kind of have built essentially like the canvas of our glitch effect here, this is kind of where it's all going to happen. Now we can actually start to use some of the built-in effects in Final Cut Pro to create this actual glitch effect. First thing we need to do is go over here and click on our effects panel. If we go over here and we scroll down and we click on the stylized category in our effects, we'll find an effect called bad TV. So what I want to do is drag bad TV onto the actual clip that we're going to make our glitch. And you can see that the bad TV effect essentially does what its name says. It makes it look like bad TV. So if you can think of like TV from like the 50s and 60s and maybe even the 70s where TV was very like noisy and pixelated and had those kind of bars that go through it, that's what this effect is going to do. So it's basically going to add a nice little kind of glitchy looking bad TV effect to our actual clip. I want you to think about the bad TV effect as kind of the base of the glitch effect. Everything else that we put on top of this is just going to accentuate that bad TV look. So this is kind of the base of the actual glitch effect. And you can see we have the option here to change the amount. Currently it's set at 25. I actually want to bump that up to about 60. So I'm going to hit 60. And you can see that by doing that, it actually added kind of a little bit more waviness in here. And it just looks a lot more glitchy. And then the other thing I want to do for the bad TV effect is I want to change the static type from the Gaussian noise or the film grain. I want to change that to blue noise, which kind of reduces some of that banding a little bit. So we're going to click on that and you can see the way it changed. So it kind of took away a little bit of the banding and kind of cleaned it up just a little bit. Now, the next thing that we want to do is also down here in our stylize, we want to go down here and we want to look for the pixelate effect. Now, the pixelate effect does exactly what you think it does because, of course, the name implies what it does. It pixelates the video. So if we just drop that onto our video clip, you can notice a little bit of pixelation here. But if I were to kind of bump it way up like this, you can see that it's definitely pixelating the video. But we don't want it to be that high. We only actually want to add a little bit of pixelation. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to set that to five so that it just kind of adds a little bit of pixelation in there and you're just starting to see that pixelation. Because if we put too much, then it doesn't really look as much like a glitch effect as more just pixelated video. And that's not really what I'm going for here. So, so far we have now the bad TV effect and we have the pixelate effect. And if we play through this, it's already starting to look pretty good. But we can add to this. There's another effect on here that I think we could add that would add to the realism of the glitch. Now, a lot of times when you see like glitchy video or glitchy anything, there's always this kind of like rainbowish effect as if like the colors are starting to spread and pull apart. And we can achieve that using an effect called prism. So we have to go back here to our blur effects and we're going to find prism in here and then we'll drag prism on top of our clip. And now you can see that there's like this kind of slight rainbow effect. It's this almost kind of chromatic aberration going on here where the color is slightly starting to peel away and we can actually bring that all the way up to 32 and you can see that it's much more pronounced and it's much more obvious. Now adding in that kind of prism effect is also just making the glitch a little bit more exciting. It's kind of adding some color, it's spreading things apart. You can see kind of the RGB going on here where it breaks all of the different colors apart like you've got red, green, and blue here. It's just a really cool effect when you're trying to get something like a glitchy look because it helps kind of separate the colors out and just adds to the effect. And finally, we need to add one more effect to kind of be the icing on the cake for our glitch effect here. So what we want to do is we want to go to the distortion category here. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's this wave effect. And so we want to actually grab the wave effect drop that onto our clip. And you can see now by default, the amount of wave that it's adding is way too intense. We don't actually want it to be this high. So it starts off at 50. So why don't we drop that down to about 20 so that we just get kind of a little bit of waviness. And you'll be able to see that as it actually animates through that effect, the waviness kind of wobbles back and forth. So it adds to the glitchiness. And ultimately what we want here is for all four of those effects to kind of work together to create that glitchy effect. So now if I play through it, 
you can see that that whole glitch effect just kind of all comes together and looks really nice. Now, no glitch effect is complete without actually adding some sound effects. And some people don't really know that in Final Cut Pro, we have a whole bunch of built-in and free sound effects that we can use that are royalty-free that we can put in our projects and use them anywhere we want. All you have to do is go up here to your actual photos and music and sound effects explorer here. And if you go here and you click on sound effects, you can see that there's going to be a whole bunch of them here. If I get rid of the search that I had in there before, there are a ton of different effects in here that come with Final Cut Pro that you can use. These are all royalty free. You can use these in any of your projects. So there's three different sounds that we're going to kind of want to put together to create our actual glitch sound. So the first sound that I want to look for is electronic shutter FX. And we want this sound to go right in the middle of the actual effect right here. Now, if I were to just kind of play this back alone, it's kind of crazy, it's kind of chaotic, it's not 100% what we want, but we can kind of bring the volume down a little bit, maybe about to five, and now we're gonna blend a few sounds together to kind of get that glitchy sound that we want. The next one I wanna look for is one called Electrical Noise. Four. Now this one is more like electrical static. So if you just kind of listen to this, it's more like just kind of electrical static. So what we want to do now is we want to grab that one. We're going to drop that, but we're going to start it at the beginning of the transition over here. And then we're just going to cut the sound off right here. So we're just going to trim that. So I'll hold down the option key and hit the right square bracket, and that will trim it down to the actual length of the actual transitions themselves. And then we're going to just fade that in. So we'll grab these little handles here and we'll fade the audio in like that. And I'll just kind of zoom in on a little bit so you can see that better. We're just fading the actual audio in so that it kind of blends with the one above it. And then if we just kind of bring that audio down maybe to about negative three, we'll just see what that sounds like. And that's cool because now it has that like staticky sound, but then it also has that like kind of tweaky little glitch sound also happening. So together they sound like this. That's the beginning of what I want. I'm almost there. So there's one more sound that I actually want to add into the mix here. It's called electronic flutter two, I believe like this. Yes. So electronic flutter FX two, if we just play it again, it's going to sound kind of crazy and chaotic. <laughs> But when we take these three sounds, so I'm going to drag this down and we're just going to kind of blend this in with it. So I'm going to bring the actual audio down to maybe about like negative 20 dB right there. And I think I'm probably going to cut it off about right there. I'll do option square bracket and that'll cut it back. Now, these three sounds together are going to kind of give me what I want. And I think I like that it just trails off like that. So what I want to do is just, I want to fade that one all the way out over to over there. I'm just going to pull this over so I can see it more. I think I'm going to fade this out a little earlier like that. And I want to kind of fade this one in as well like that. Okay. And now the three of them together sound like this. And that's pretty good. I think I want to lower the volume a little bit on this one. So maybe not negative 20, maybe like negative 25. Can I reach it? Uh, nope. Oh, 23 is going to be the one. All right, let's try that. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I think that sounds really nice. So the three of those sounds together are going to create our glitch sound. So we'll just kind of play through that again. And then to finish this all off, I'm going to actually throw on some music here and I'm just going to throw this down here and then zoom out and look at it for a second because I'm pretty sure that I don't really want to start the music back here. I think I want to start the music somewhere around here. So I'm just going to actually cut this right here like that. I'm going to delete that clip and I'm going to drag this one all the way back so that the music kind of starts a little bit later. And then I'm just going to drop the volume down on that, maybe to about nine, and we'll kind of slowly fade that one in as well. And then let's just kind of see how that looks. And now that we have the music, the sound effects, we have all of the different parts, let's just kind of recap really quickly what we did. So basically, 
we sped up the actual part of the clip that we wanted to glitch so that it kind of added to the glitch effect. We added a transition on each side that was kind of a shortened version of the directional blur. That was this up here. And then on the clip itself, we added the bad TV effect, the pixelate effect, the prism effect, and the wave effect. And we applied these different values to it to kind of get just the right amount of glitch that we wanted. And then to top the whole thing off, we found a few different sound effects here in our actual browser over here. We found the sound effects we wanted. We applied those. We layered three different sound effects to get a more glitchy sound. And then we applied the music to it. And now let's take a look at the final result that we've created. And that, my friends, is how you create a glitch effect in Final Cut Pro. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like the video. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks so much for watching, and if you did enjoy this video, you're definitely going to like that one.